Good morning, Zion. This is Rebecca. This is Chip. Chip is the sheepdog who helps me do our lessons once a week, and he's got keys in his mouth. Chip, why do you have keys? Do you, are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> Maybe, can I hold the keys for you? Okay, why do you have keys? Are you going somewhere? No, but I wanna go for a ride after, after our Sunday school lesson today. Can we go for a ride? I love the car. Yes, we'll definitely go for a ride. And you can ride in the back seat with the windows down. It's a nice breezy day. It'll be good, good for you to get some fresh air. It's very exciting. I love, I love going in the car. Okay, very good, very good. So we're in year A. Um, this is the 17th, 17th week of Pentecost. And our lesson from, for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 20, 23 through 32. I'm glad to be with the Zion families today. I just love the Zion families. I do too. It's wonderful that we can visit like this uh, over the screen here. We've been reading and listening from the Gospel of Matthew about Jesus. What are some things that Jesus has been teaching us these last few weeks, Chip? Forgiveness, prayer, and grumbling. Don't grumble. Don't grumble. I remember that. That was from last week's lesson. Yeah, today's lesson starts with Israel's chief priests and elders. And remember, the grumbling was about people missing out on God's generosity. So some of these stories are really talking about how God wants to restore a relationship with us. And I think this is one of those stories today. Yeah, so today's lesson starts with Israel's chief priests and elders. They were religious leaders who taught people about God but they're missing some important qualities about God and the relationship he wants to have with them and with us. The Gospel according to Matthew chapter 21, verses 23 through 32. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it a, of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he'll say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we're afraid of the crowd for all regard, John is a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For, God, for John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. You know, the religious leaders have a good memory. They can remember all those laws. They have them written down all over the place and they have them memorized and they never, they're always trying to remember all those laws. They seem like they remember everything and they must have a large list for the things they have to do all day. They can remember all the laws they want to keep. Or at least they try to. You know, having a good memory is a good thing, but Having understanding is maybe what is needed here. The religious leaders have poor understanding. They can remember all the laws they want to, that they want to keep, but they don't understand why the laws were given in the first place. 
which was for God to show his love to his people and to have a relationship with them. They don't see that Jesus is telling them to be God's people of grace through faith. They say, who made you the boss? Why should we listen to you? They're showing a lack of faith. You know one of the reasons I like Jesus so much? Because when the people are trying to trick him and be kind of mean, Jesus, even though he's a little angry with them, he doesn't tell them to scram. He tells them a parable to help them see the truth about themselves. And this helps me to see the truth about myself. When I learn these true things, I feel kind of joyful. Chip, I think that's a good way to think about the truth. Yeah, I think the truth, when we know it and Jesus is telling us the truth, yeah, it makes us feel joyful. That's a good, that's a good thing to keep in mind. Let's read, let's read the parable one more time for the kids. They may have missed it. You mind if we read it again? No, go ahead. <laughs> a man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believe him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Good reading. Good reading. Jesus says that sinners living a life against the will of the Heavenly Father now choose to accept God's offer of free grace revealed in the gospel. They repent and they believe and they enter the kingdom. On the other hand, the righteous claiming to be obedient sons reject the gospel and remain outside the kingdom. Hmm. Grace. Hmm. Repent. Righteous. I think I know what repent and righteous mean, but what does grace mean? Well, first you tell me what repent and self-righteous mean. Well, I heard the word repent before. It means to turn around from the direction you're going and return to God. When I repent, it means a lot more than just feeling bad for my sins. It means turning away from my selfish ways and returning to God. And self-righteousness or self-righteous or righteousness. I think Jesus is using those words kind of the same way. I think it might be too. I think self-righteousness is how Jesus is using the word righteous here. Self-righteousness is what I'm feeling when and acting when I'm looking to my own needs and not to anyone else's. When I ignore or justify my own faults. And grace is a free gift. It's a free gift from God given in love to people to bring them to him. The Apostle Paul said grace is a gift and Jesus said, grace dwells inside of us from God. Grace is God's forgiveness of sin and offering of salvation. God's grace helps us to choose and do the good. Each of these words, repentance and grace, produces an action. Repentance restores us and grace stirs us up to do good. And here we have a problem with these two sons. There's some self-righteousness going on. Yeah, it's going on in their hearts. The two sons are like the religious leaders. Although the leaders understood God's grace, they said and taught that holiness was achieved only by strict obedience to the law. The work was all on them. 
And Jesus is saying, if they keep on believing that way, they will lose the promises of God. While the tax collectors and prostitutes who the Pharisees think are better than, that they are better than, they now welcome the message of grace and they receive the promised blessings of God. So the religious leaders are rejecting Jesus' authority and they're not accepting the good news. That even though they, we can all be different and we can look different and we can live in different homes and we can speak different languages, we're all invited to be with our Heavenly Father as one family. God is always inviting us to follow him. No matter how many times we turn our backs on the one who loves us, no matter how pig-headed and hard-hearted we may be, we are forgiven and we're wel welcome back again and again and again. God wants us to be a family. The self-righteous find themselves excluded from the kingdom of God, while the lost people who are not like the religious leaders, they find themselves included in the kingdom of God. While God does show generosity and grace toward the lost, Jesus is saying the religious leaders have a choice and they can turn and follow him. Remember also the religious leaders here are trying to trap Jesus. They're challenging his authority and they're trying to trick him. John the Baptist told them they were ignoring God's grace and told them they needed to change their minds and return to God. John the Baptist told them, let's go and be a part of God's kingdom. And he told them how to get there through repentance, a turning, from the, a turning from the self to God, and belief in the promise of God's grace revealed through what Jesus was saying and doing. Here we see the unexpected happening in this parable. The two sons have refused to enter, and all the outcasts, well, they're just buzzing right into the kingdom. Yeah, they are. They're streaming in, aren't they? The good news, which is the gospel, teaches us to turn around and face Jesus and rely on him who says what he's going to do. And he keeps his promises. You know, Jesus loved everyone in the temple. I think it's important to remember that. Sometimes we see the religious leaders in Jesus', Jesus stories as kind of the bad guys. Mm. Eventually, a lot of them do become the bad guys. But there are some of these religious leaders, remember like Zacchaeus? He really does want to know what the truth is. So Jesus did love everyone in that temple. And some people, well, they're choosing not to respond to that love. So that's the good news for today. Yeah, to remember that we're not in this alone. Jesus gives us grace and faith and the joy of knowing the truth to follow him. I think we should pray now. I think so too. I think so too. Uh, I remember from last week, we were going to look up some prayers in the Book of Common Prayer. Is that what you would like to do? Okay. Are you... And remember, it's a good thing to be, let's make sure that we're actually concentrating on our prayers and not just thinking about what we want to do next. You mean like go in the car? <laughs> yes, like go in the car, but hang on, because we're going to get there. <laughs> okay, so the, in the Book of Common Prayer, there is a section called Prayers and Thanksgivings. And they start on page 814. Well, that's kind of near where the lectionary starts on page 888. That's right. You remember. There are several prayers. Some of them are for the family, the military, for rain. Um, some of them are for the blessing of a child. And even all of creation. I'm part of all of creation. I'm a dog. That's right. You are part of God's created world. So, let's start with the first prayer. O Heavenly Father, 
who has filled the world with beauty. Open our eyes to behold your gracious hand in all your works. They're rejoicing in your whole creation. We may learn to serve with gladness for the sake of him through whom all things were made, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 We said it together. Good job. Is it time to say goodbye? Bye-bye, Zion. I'm going to go for a ride in the car. See you next week. See you next week, Zion. Oh, I'm so glad you can carry the keys. It's really helpful to have dogs who know how to do little jobs like that. <laughs>